Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to the Boring Company and Elon Musk. I'm back today with episode 26 of my series looking into the Boring Company. Got quite an interesting one for you today, so let's get going with it. So, top speed dilemma. Can't other automakers build fast electric cars? Now, I've been reading through some of your comments in the YouTube uh, channel, and there's been a few people possibly questioning whether this top speed of 155 miles per hour is actually possible. They're saying that maybe Tesla can do it, but not any other automakers. It's way too difficult to do. It's way too costly. No one else is going to try and do this. Therefore, it's going to become some kind of walled garden. There's going to be a moat around the system and no one else will be able to use it. Thus, it will turn into a monopoly. I fundamentally disagree with that premise. I don't think it's true. And today, I'm just going to go through why I believe that is not to be the case. So, 155 miles per hour is the top speed of, that, of this system. That's, I believe, 200 kilometers per hour. I think it is. Elon says this is not intended to be restricted to a Tesla. That's referring to the system. This is not intended to be some walled garden or just for Teslas. So obviously he wants the likes of Volkswagen, BMW, GM, Ford to come on in and use this system. Elon wants slash needs other automotive manufacturers to use his tunnel. If he wants to scale up this tunnel, he not only needs many hundreds of miles of tunnel, he also will need many thousands of vehicles. And at the moment, it's very, very difficult to add additional capacity to Fremont and the Gigafactory whilst they plan to roll out new vehicles, uh, semi-truck, the new Roadster, the Model Y, the pickup truck. It's going to be difficult, thus... It will benefit Tesla and the Boeing company greatly if other automakers come in and help supply vehicles and pods for this system. So it's in his interest if he works with people and he always wants to work with people. Uh, it does seem ambitious since many electric cars can't even go 120 miles per hour, but they weren't designed to go in this system. They were designed five or six years ago to just be general you know commuter cars for people that live 10 to 15 miles from where they work and they use the car fairly infrequently if you look at the nissan leaf as an example so it, it that's not how you can build cars to fit this system that's what i'm trying to say all you need is you know a spec for what you need to achieve and you can do it fairly easily uh, and i say build it and they will come once people can see uh, Tesla pods whipping around this system at 155 miles per hour, other automakers will see this as an opportunity and want to step in to this potential new market. And Uber and Lyft, obviously, because it's interfering with their business. Uh, this was a slide from the event on the 18th. It says private cars compatible with all autonomous EVs. So it would have to be autonomous, but we'll cover that in a separate episode some other time later in the year. Uh, here's the question that I asked myself a couple of days ago. Is it prohibitively expensive to build a fast electric car? And I'm not talking about acceleration. I'm talking about top speed. Now, having acceleration as well is important, but that top speed... Of 150 miles per hour is that achievable is that really difficult to achieve no it is not that is a fallacy it is relatively easy to achieve 160 170 miles per hour in an electric car if you build it in such a way to achieve that target Rivian, Porsche, Aston Martin, Lucid, Jaguar, Mercedes-Benz, Faraday Future, Volkswagen, I could go on, there are other uh, vehicle manufacturers, all have plans for 140 to 150 mile per hour vehicles or EVs in the works. 
if you ask an engineer, and this is a good statement to, if you want to think about it, if you ask an engineer to design a compact, nippy sedan, that is what he will give you. And that is what we've been asking engineers at Renault, at Nissan, at BMW, you know, that designed me that. If you ask an engineer to produce a fast, high capacity vehicle, that's what he will build you. Yeah, so he'll build you a vehicle that can easily do 155 miles per hour and can hold 10, 12, maybe even 14 people. But, now this is a question that I was asked. You're excluding middle income people who own used Nissan Leafs from this system. That is very, very bad. Uh, frankly, guys, I couldn't care less. Yeah? If you can't buy a car to fit this system, don't use the system. Use public roads, get a bike, uh, get a motorbike, you know, use the bus, use the train. I don't really care. This system is going to be for fast vehicles. And if you don't have a fast vehicle, you're not welcome in the system. I still think that the actual pod that is produced for this system will look a lot more like this than the current Model X. Just because it, it, it is this this is built for public transport. A Model X has a huge front, has a huge boot. That is just wasted space that could be used uh, for standing area, for seating area, for extra batteries. Thus, they need to build a vehicle that is fit for purpose. How do you achieve 155 miles per hour efficiently using electric motors? Well... It's all down to the gearing ratios and having dual motors. So you'll actually have different gearing ratios on the different motors. The front motor will have a, a larger gearing ratio than the rear motor. One is for mainly for acceleration, getting the car up to 80, 90 miles per hour quickly. The second motor is all about getting up to that top speed. So you'll have different gearing ratios. I also think, and I was, I was thinking about this before, and I've added this to the slide, I think this is a big startup opportunity. Is there another way of doing it without using dual motors and gearing ratios? Because I know, I know that people are looking at actually adding uh, a transmission to electric cars i.e. you might have three, maybe even four gears. Maybe just two gears. Maybe just one gear to get you going and then a very, very high gear to get you up to that top speed around 155 miles per hour. And I think if you're a startup, you could really get into this. Maybe take um, a used Model X and convert it so that it can do a higher top speed. Maybe 160, 170 miles per hour so it can easily get up to 155 because remember, actually accelerating in a Model X from 120 miles per hour to 155 miles per hour will probably take in the region of 10 to 14 seconds. So it's not really, you know, built fit for purpose, especially if you only have, um, you know, the single motor version, one of the early versions of the Model X or the Model S. Can a Nissan Leaf or Renault Zoe be converted to run up to 150 miles per hour? I think that is a possible startup opportunity. Take a used Renault, Renault Zoe and convert it so it can run up to 150 miles per hour. It possibly could be done. Possibly that is a big business opportunity for a new startup. Um, I pulled this off the internet. Uh, this website uh, lets you work out what the top speed of, and it is based actually based, based on electric scooters but it kind of gives you the idea of how it works. So based on the actual gearing ratio, what will the top speed be? So this first one here, I had a 5.3 to one gearing ratio, and that gives you a top speed of 155 miles per hour, which is the top speed of our system. Um, and then for the actual front motor, I've used a different gearing ratio, uh, which is six, it's around 6.5 to one, and that gets you up to 128 miles per hour. Now, the advantage of this is the actual front motor, which will be this one, will get you excellent acceleration. So the zero to 60 time will be really, really good. But when you get above 100 miles per hour, this 
motor, the rear motor will really kick in and give you that top speed much, much more quickly than had you been using this one. And it'll also get you a much higher top speed in the end. So, smaller gear ratio equals a higher top speed. A higher gear ratio equals faster acceleration. Uh, I also pulled this off uh, another YouTube channel. Uh, it's called 2-Bit Da Vinci. And he was talking about this uh, potential uh, issue here. And he was talking about the actual new Roadster and how that uses dual motors at different gearing ratios. However, one of the issues is the actual efficient efficiency per kilowatt hour. Now, as you can see, I believe this is the Model 3. It might be, I don't know if this is the Model 3 or the Model S. But I think it's the Model 3. It looks like a Model 3 to me. Right. The actual efficiency is 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour in the roadster it's at 3.1 which is quite a dramatic fall the roadster the first roadster was very small and very light so i don't really read into that too much but what you need to do for the boeing company pod is have it somewhere in between this model 3 and this roadster somewhere around the 3.6 3.7 uh, efficiency range um, and you'd have to adjust the gearing ratios to fit that. Otherwise, it would you'd end up charging the vehicle every six or seven hours, which you, ideally you don't necessarily want to do that. You want to be charging it maybe every 10 to 12 hours. I pulled this off the Tesla forum. It gives the current gear ratio of uh, uh, Model S P85D as 9.7 to 1. So it, if we are taking that as what is that as something that we will need for the actual Boeing Company pod, you you might have the front motor at uh, nine point seven to one gear ratio. You would then have the rear motor at around eight point five, eight point two to one gear ratio, and that would give you a nice top speed, well above one hundred and fifty five miles per hour, and it, that would mean your acceleration between. 100 and 155 miles per hour would be fairly decent. A lot quicker than just using two 9.7 to 1 gearing ratios on both uh, both the rear and the front wheels. Other solutions that I potentially could be looked at, they're, they're, they're almost like compromises and I, and I don't really, uh, really support them that much. But um, you could... This is my favourite one of them all. You could work in collaboration with others, i.e. other startups, maybe Uber, maybe Lyft, to jointly build vehicles that are fit for this system or fit for purpose that can achieve the 155 miles, miles per hour speed limit. Um, you could... I don't want to do this. You could reduce the system's top speed to 135 miles per hour. Now, it, the system would still work rather well at 135 miles per hour but it, it, it's not it's not necessary when you look at the technology that we have to hand at the moment for achieving 155 miles per hour um, you could introduce some speed limits which is maybe a better compromise i as you go further underground the speed limit goes up so you could actually have slower vehicles um like your renault zoe like your Nissan Leaf on level one, then you could have your vehicles like your BMW i3, um, other kind of vehicles of that kind of nature on level two, then faster vehicles, level three, level four, and level five. Um, what's my overall opinion? Uh, it's right to open the system to all automakers. Open it up to all automakers means that you can scale this system a lot, lot quicker than if you had to build all the pods and vehicles yourself, yeah? And you also have to put invest less money, which is good for everyone, really. Um, I think people like Uber and Lyft would be interested. It gives everyone an opportunity to sell more vehicles in the US. If you've got other automakers using this system, they're going to pay you per mile. They might pay you nine cents per mile. You can invest that money into building more tunnels. Thus, you don't need to lend as much money from the bank. In fact, you might not need to lend money from the bank 
because you've got so many other automakers paying you money every single hour of every single day that you can just invest it into new tunnels and just keep building out the system until you don't need any more tunnels, i.e. you've got 3,000 3, tunnels in LA. Uh, there's our great man, Elon Musk. What a great picture that is. Um, just in terms of other things I've noticed on the, the YouTube comments section, there are a few bizarre statements. Um, I'm just going to address them right now. Wind resistance in the tunnels will be so great it will stop vehicles from achieving 155 miles per hour. Uh, it's BS, guys. Uh, the thing is, it isn't a bus. You know, it's got this thing is going to have a low drag coefficient. That is total FUD. They will easily achieve 155 miles per hour. If you don't think they can achieve 155 miles per hour, show us the proof. Otherwise, stop spreading spud, uh, FUD. SPUD. Stop spreading FUD. Low drag coefficient plus dual motors equals zero problems. Um, yeah, someone said it will never get planning permission. And it's in LA's interest to build this system because of all the air pollution. So, yeah, yeah, right. It's going to get passed. Absolutely going to get passed. Right, guys. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. If you've not done so, that would be fantastical, guys. Thank you for watching. Do very much appreciate it. Please comment below. Really enjoyed reading your comments. I read every single comment you write and I will write back if I think it's a good one. Please keep coming with the comments and actively you know, discuss what has been talked about today in the comments below. Uh, let's go a few pictures. Um, love that lift. Uh, oh yeah, I, I set up a Patreon. That is in the links below. Please uh, back me on Patreon if you would like to do so. Or if you can't afford Patreon, uh, go on uh, Bit, Bitbacker, which is another site which is similar to Patreon, and back me on there. Uh, $1 is absolutely suffice, guys. That is perfect. I'll let you ask any question, whatever you like, for that $1. So fantastic. Okay, guys. Thanks for talking to you. And remember, don't be boring. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye.